When it comes to aftermarket suspension, one of the common questions we get asked is, how should we adjust our bump and rebound dampening? So we're here to answer that question with Frank from KW Suspension. Now, first of all, answering that question, let's be honest, Frank, this is uh, quite difficult. It's, it's a bit of a rabbit hole. So let's get a little bit of an understanding at the, the start of, of what bump and rebound dampening even means. What do those terms refer to? Yeah, absolutely. It's like you said, easy to confused. Um, I think one of the things that people need to understand is compression simple, right? Compression is as the shock is compressing or getting shorter. Rebound is the opposite, the opposite phase of that stroke. As the spring starts to, uh, you know, push back on the on the car and bring the body back out into extension, that rebound force is uh, is what you're controlling. Basically, the speed of how quickly that happens. Uh, even taking it one step further back, I think a lot of confusion around dampers comes from the fact that they're often referred to as shock absorbers, and, and I, I don't personally like that term, but if we if we thought about what would happen on the car with a spring and no damper or shock absorber at all, if we go over a bump, the spring obviously initially compresses as we go over the bump, and then the whole suspension will just continue to oscillate almost indefinitely. So the damper is there to reduce those oscillations and get everything back under control quickly. Is that, is that a, a good quick way of describing yeah, it? Yeah, I think you nailed it. That's exactly what, what you want. You want the car to uh, you know, absorb or deal with whatever happens, uh, whether it's a pothole or a bump, right? Those are both d different reactions. Um, they, the, the response is going to be different from the vehicle, but you want the car to go through that and work back to its normal steady state as soon as possible. Now that we've got a bit of an understanding of, of why the damp is important, can we talk a little bit more about the separate elements of bump and rebound damping? You, know, you, you mentioned the differences between them, but I guess one of the questions there would be, why would we maybe want to adjust it? Why would we maybe need more dampening or less dampening? Yeah, uh, and there's you know a, a million different ways that you can skin a cat, I guess. Um, this is one of those one of those things that leads into the endless debate of, of ways to do things. Um, but ultimately, the, the reason you want to change the damping behavior of the car is either the car's uh, exhibiting some sort of behavior you don't like, right? You're hitting a bump and the car's skipping, or you're hitting a pothole and the car's bouncing and, and, and waving uh, a bunch of oscillations down the road. And so having control of your dampers allows you to, to you know, uh, become more comfortable with what behavior is going to happen after the car. If you're, if your car is skipping, generally you may have too much compression, so it's not allowing the wheel to absorb over that bump and reset. So softening up your compression is going to allow that to uh, that motion to happen, and you'll still uh, the car will resettle back to its normal state without losing traction. Is is sort of the goal in that scenario, right? Essentially, ultimately, we're trying to optimise that tyre contact patch yeah, with, with the track or road surface in order to optimise grip, correct? Yeah, uh, contact patch is important and also uh, feedback and confidence in the car, right? You want to you wanna know that when you go over this type of bump or say you hit uh, like a curb at the racetrack, you want to know that the car is going to behave in a similar way every time and, uh, and helping to tune that behaviour to what you like and what you're comfortable with is ultimately going to allow you to 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 drive more confidently. Okay. Now the other element we've talked about, kind of the tire contact patch and how the car will negotiate a, a, a bump. Another element of this is driver input affects the the suspension movement in terms of when we get on the brake. Obviously, there is the the the, the front of the car is going to dive. Likewise, as we turn into a corner, the car tends to body roll. Is there an element of the damper tuning that affects how the car will behave or respond to the driver in terms of the feel? Uh, yeah, absolutely, and both rebound and compression will have an effect on that, right? If you if you think about what's actually happening at happening as you uh, as you're charging into a corner and you smash the brake pedal, all of that weight is going to transfer forward, and so by either you know, uh, tightening up the rebound in the rear or uh, adding more compression force in the front, you can change how quickly that happens. And so it's really, on, on every corner, it's a tool for every different type of scenario, right? Um, now, the compression adjustment may net you uh, a different effect somewhere else on the track, so maybe that's not the one you want to make, but being able to, you know, add a couple clicks of rebound in the rear, it doesn't affect you everywhere else or, or affect the feel as much as you would maybe like to on the street. So every every scenario is different depending on which behavior you're trying to tune out. 
Um, but having a, a separately uh, an independently adjustable rebound and compression in your uh, damper that allows you to do that makes all the difference in, in giving you the tools that you need. Now, at the at the sort of entry level, obviously we start with dampers that have no external adjustability at all. It, it just is what it is, and then we've got independent adjustable bump and rebound or a single adjustment for rebound. And then if we're looking at very high end race developed shocks, uh, maybe four way or five way adjustable with high speed bump and rebound, and maybe a, a blow off valve. So, but before we sort of go too far down that rabbit hole, can we talk about what the difference between high speed and low speed uh, rebound? and compression adjustments mean? Yeah, so what, what we're actually referring to when we say speed is the shaft speed of the damper, the piston rod speed in other words. or no, the, Nothing to do with the car speed. Not, not the car speed, the car speed is irrelevant, right? And, and the way I like to explain this is think of running over a two by four in the road, how quickly that happens, how abruptly that happens, that's gonna get you into the high speed range of your damper in terms of compression. Now, when you're taking a freeway overpass and, and uh, you, you get into the corner and the car starts to lean over a little bit, that's getting into your low speed compression. So it's a, the easy way to sort of separate those two. So would it be fair to say that the, the low speed is more around driver input, steering, et cetera, and the high speed is more to do with the way the car uh, negotiates the bumps on the road? Yeah, I think um, I think you can sort of generalize it that way. I think there's some blurry lines that, that you get into there, but for the most part, I think you're you're pretty spot on. I mean, when it comes to suspension, there's not a lot of black and white, so yeah. a little bit of uh, sort of an understanding of the gray areas is, is necessary. Now, I, I use that term blow off valve. I mean, again, this isn't something we're going to find on our sort of uh, aftermarket uh, coilovers for a, a road car, but because I've used that term, can you explain what that means for high-end race cars? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, basically, what what we use it for is to tune off uh, like uh, really high impacts of, uh, of the wheel over curbs um, to help the car basically stop producing force at a certain range, right? Um, as, the, as the car jumps over that curb, you don't want to transmit all that force into the body. So using that blow off helps it uh, kind of taper off that force at a certain degree. And giving, giving teams the ability to adjust that really changes the behavior and the driving confidence and ultimately allows them to go faster. So essentially it allows the driver to, to run a sharp curbing without upsetting the, the handling balance of the car? Yeah, you're, you're basically tuning how upset the car becomes, right? Or, or uh, trying to alleviate that as much as possible. Now, now why I wanted to talk about these different types of adjustment and, and what will be available, is it sort of easy, if, I, I would say it again, it's easy for people looking at the options available to think, well, well, more is obviously better. Give me all of the adjustability that I can get. And obviously that also means a higher price point. But when we're first getting started, you know, you're building your first car maybe in, in, your, in your home workshop mm -hmm. and uh, maybe it's a modified street car and you're taking it to the track on the weekends. Is it necessary or even an advantage to have a, a four or five way adjustable shock? Um. Are there advantages to it? Yeah, absolutely. But if you don't know how to use the tools that you're given, um, you know how beneficial is that to you? You know, we're not in the we're not in the space where we want to give you the most expensive product we offer. We want to give you the tool that you know how to use that's going to work the best for your needs. Um, and now, giving you uh, the the different types of adjustments that we have, it's not necessarily just the number like we, we talked about. You know, it's also the valve technology that goes into that damper that has inherent differences in the way it behaves or how well it, uh, it performs on a, on a certain type of car, whether it's uh, like a, a large high horsepower sedan or something like that, or you know, as we get into like the Porsche race cars that are a more finely tuned machine, you have more adjustments um, with, the, with the blow off type stuff, but you don't necessarily always need that stuff on a street car. I think the point I wanted to get across for, for the average enthusiast, often less is going to be more. As you say, yes, the, the more expensive uh, dampers have advantages, but it's understanding and getting the advantages out of it that's important. So if you don't know how to adjust them, then it may be lost on the average enthusiast. Now, it, just to sort of get to the crux of the question here, I, I guess this is impossible to answer, so I'm not asking for a specific <laughs> answer here, but is there any tips that you can give with a, a simple one-way adjustable where a lot of our enthusiasts will be starting in terms of, they go to a, a racetrack for the weekend, what would you suggest that they try doing to sort of try and feel out and, and, and figure out where the, the operating window should be for that particular damper and their driving style? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first and foremost, I, I highly encourage you to play with any knobs that you have on your dampers. I mean, it's one of the biggest things that people are afraid of is making the wrong adjustment. And you can always go back to where you started, right? So that's a that's a good place or a, a good thing to be mindful of. Um, 
as as you go with, with like a one-way adjustable damper yeah yeah feel it out what, what what's the car doing you know what what don't you like is it squatting too much in the front or is it transferring too much weight or is it you know uh, slow to snap from one corner to the other like play play with your dampers and obviously the type of adjustment that you have is is sort of you know it dictates the changes that you make but but try it you know soften it up everybody thinks that harder is the best right you i, I want to crank it to full stiff You'd be surprised how much time you can gain sometimes by softening things up and letting the suspension actually articulate and work. Yeah, I think it, it, it's it's a common misconception that harder is better in terms of spring rates as well, but the, the wheels still have to actually be contacting the track to, to do their job. Yeah. I mean, one, one of my tips, I guess, that I'd give is it, if you're going to a track day and you've got a couple of test sessions, being methodical about your testing as well. Yeah. There's no point just randomly adjusting the front and maybe no, then the rear, but uh, I always like, particularly as a non-professional driver, to make quite a large change. If we've got 20 yeah. clicks of adjustment, maybe make the first one 10 or go full soft to full hard and, and just understand that range and then start making smaller adjustments. But uh, the thing that's really important is methodical adjustments. Yep. Go to the track with a plan and also write down your findings. And if you do there that, you that is a really good way to sort of start at least understanding how those changes make the car respond. And then from there, you'll be able to fine tune and find your happy place. Now, Frank, if people want to find out a little bit more about KW products, where are they best to do so? Um, they can check us out on the website, kwsuspensions.com. And uh, if there's any questions that uh, you can't find from, uh, you can't answer on the website, just give our tech team a call. We're always happy to connect you with our motorsports guys or uh, answer any questions that you may have. Okay, perfect. Thanks for your time, Frank. Yeah, thanks for coming by. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.